stop and think for a minute when Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane leaves his disciples and goes further it says he fell on his face and prayed you as a Christian you know you ask yourself you ever done that you ever fallen on your face and prayed you use the same one who's laughing at Muslims right hey look at the man he's, st he's got his behind stuck in the air what kind of worship is that you know but hey that's what Jesus did yeah that's how he worshiped you know the signs are there if you're looking but if you're not looking if you're just in that you know automatic mode you know church is Sunday you slide in with everybody else you slide <laughs> out you know <laughs> you know it's, there's no thinking process here you, you just it's slide a, in yeah just it's a feel, with the flow. feel good thing you know yeah. they, they sing some songs the band is playing you, get the, you feel the feel the spirit you know yeah. what kind of spirit do you feeling is something else but you know that's it you know you, you you've not there's no thought process involved here. yeah there's no coming to know God and coming really closer to God you know, and this is one of the things which um, I know many of the um, Americans who had come over to Saudi Arabia years back when you know I'd met a lot of the troops that come for the Gulf War and I met up with some of them and uh, you know showing them around um, Saudi Arabia different parts of the these were the these troops troops that yeah, yeah. had come there and after the thing, before they got processed and sent home, you know, I took a number of them into the mosque. You know, of course they were sh shy to go in at first because they had been given strict orders: don't come within thirty meters of a mosque. You know, you just pass it by it. the distance. Don't even come near it. Right? This is their place of worship. Of course, we have no issues about it. Come on in. So, yeah, really, they took off their shoes. They came in and inside the mosque, they sat looking. Nothing, no chairs, no you know elaborate this that or the other. It's very plain, very simple. And then they observe worship, how Muslims worship. And they, you know, a number of them said to me, you know, I said, hey, you know, this is worship. What we're doing back home, you know, pulling out the guitar and the drums and <laughs> and something else all together, man. It's not worship. It's after party. <laughs> It's disco, yeah. you know. You know, everybody got the spirit. You know, hey, that's yeah. not worship, man. That's not really worship. You know, the serenity that's there. You know, where one really feels in communion with God. I mean, that, that's the real worship. So I think that um, if a person just stops and thinks for a minute, you know, that's not the way Jesus worshipped. Jesus and his disciples, they were not doing the things that people do now in the church. You know, just stop and think for a minute. Yeah. Why? They, they, they had song and dance then. You know, the Romans and the Greeks, you know, they had their song and dance. Yeah. You know? So why wasn't, why wasn't that incorporated in the worship? That's a man-made thing. Men added that at a certain point in history and time to make, you know, uh, worship more entertaining, to keep more people coming in, mm -hmm. putting money in the plate, keeping the priest, you know, well taken care of, the minister... He's got a good life, you know, he's got, got to pay the bills now, yeah. right? So, keep it entertaining. So it's entertainment. Yeah. But it's not worship. Worship is not entertainment. You don't go to a place of worship to be entertained. You're going to that place of worship to communicate with God, to be in communion with God, to reflect on the Word of God and have that Word have an impact in your lives, guide you. You come out of that worship guided, finding the way, not being, you know, uh, entertained and, 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 and massaged and, you know. No, that's not real worship. A couple more points before we uh, come to the end. I'd like to thank everybody for sitting tight. Inshallah, everybody can benefit. We want to ask you, Sheikh, tell us, now, we talked about who Jesus, peace be upon him, is a true messenger of the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that he is not God, never claimed to be God, but someone on the other side says, well, he's the son of God. What do they mean, Shay? How do we respond to this? Well, you know, there's a simple, simple way to look at this. If we say that Jesus was the son of God, we know that the son of a dog, a puppy, is a little dog. Yeah. Son of a cat, a 
kitten is a little cat, then what's the son of a god? A little god? So now you've got a big god and a little god? Yeah. What happened to the one god? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what happened to the one god, you know? Because the son of a god is nothing but a god, got to be a god. Yeah. You know, so you, now you have two gods. So this is where you have run into problems. And this is where now you have to invent something called Trinity to explain how God can have a son and yet that son is, his st is, is still him. You know, and all the other mental gymnastics that you have to go through to deal with this, you know. And in the end, you just have to say it's a mystery. Yeah. How it is, is really a mystery. So no, the idea of son of God, I mean, this is an ancient pagan idea. The Romans had it. The Greeks had it. The gods were like human beings. They had sons and daughters and, you know, they'd have relations with human beings and have half gods and, you know. <laughs> so that, that's what you're talking about here. This is not God. God doesn't have a son. Everything besides God is his creation. He only tells it be and it is. Simple. Simple. The person now or the people, this is very simple to understand. Worship the creator, not his creation. We talked about Jesus as a mighty messenger. He's a creation of God. He worshiped God, as you said. And now this is grasping our very nature. At least for us it is. Hopefully, God willing is grasping that very nature that's inside the people who are listening. But they say, you know what? How can Islam, which simply means surrender and submission to God alone, be a religion or a way of life from the Creator when it's always associated with things blowing up? It's always associated with terrorism. How do we respond to this? Well, what we have to say is we make a distinction between the terrorist and what he is necessarily associated with. He and his act might be involved in an act of terrorism. McVeigh was a Christian. Timothy McVeigh, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was a, he was a Christian. Blew up the FBI buildings. A lot of people lost their lives. Do we associate that violent act that he did to his Christianity? No. That's not correct. The, uh, the uh, IRA, they were Catholics struggling against the UK, Britain, which was Protestant. But we didn't look at their, the, the violent acts that they did blowing up cafes and railroad stations and pubs and all these other We didn't look at their acts of violence as Catholic violence. No, it was IRA. It's just military activity, which was illegitimate or legitimate or whatever. We don't, we don't associate the two. You yeah. know? Uh, Hitler, he was a good Christian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as far as you know, what the, the criteria of being a good Christian does. Yeah, he was a Christian. Do we associate what he did with Christianity? No. So why are we going to associate what some people do? Oh, well, they say, well, you know, he says it's in the name of Islam. Well, okay, so what if any of these other people said it was in the name of Christianity? Does that make it in the name of Christianity? No. no. But the fact that Muslims, because of the fact that they are more in touch with their religion, and they try to relate whatever they do, back to their religion, you know, because religion plays a bigger role in the lives of Muslims than it does in Christians and others, right? It's more intimately interwoven. So now the fact that a person does an act and then he relates it back to religion, is that what makes that act an act of the religion? Or is it just his act and because it's natural for him to associate things with his religion, that's what he's doing. You know, if we want to know what the religion actually says, we have to go and read it. We have to find out. We have to find out the truth. You know, when 9-11 happened, what did uh, Bush say? Bush was the first one to get on the television and say, this is not an act of Islam. This is an act of a small band of terrorists, you know, who are not acting according to Islam, because Islam means peace. That was the president of the U.S. saying that. 
That's not us Muslims saying that. He knew. He understood. You know? So, we say, you want to know the truth? Then go to the source. Read the Quran and see what it says. What is it calling to? Is it calling to violent acts? Or is it calling to submission to the will of God? Leading a life which is guided by God so that each and everything that you think to do, you question yourself, is this pleasing to God or not? And you have a criteria, you have a way of determining, because you might say, okay, is it pleasing to God or not? Well, I don't really know. How do I find out? Well, a messenger was sent. The final messenger who clarified what is pleasing to God and what is not. In the details, the general principles are there in the Quran. But then the messenger came and lived it as Jesus lived the Gospels that he taught. He lived it. He showed them how they should live. And Moses, the Torah, and all of the prophets, they lived and showed people how they should live a godly life. A life which is pleasing to God. So we have the message intact. We're not saying that there isn't some of the message there in Christianity and its texts, etc., and in Judaism and its texts, but it's not intact. It's been tattered, it's been broken up, things have been added, taken out, and you know, you've got something in the end which is uh, illegitimate in certain aspects, legitimate in some. But for a lot of people, determining what is and what isn't is very difficult. So they just say it's, you know, it's all from God. But really, if you should stop and think, it can't be. These things that are there, you know, which call to corruption, you know, worshipping other than God, this can't be from God. Exactly. So any closing comments, suggestions for those who are used to procrastinating, a little bit lazy, how to get them motivated to seek the truth, to look for the truth, and to be on the truth? Well, I would say, dear viewers, that you have to stop at some time in your life. If you wait until it's the grave, too late. That's a fatal mistake of many people. There's no coming back a second time. We're not in a cycle of rebirth. We have one shot. Either we do it right, or we've lost it all. So, if it is the destiny of God, you were flipping through the channels and you saw us here chatting, and you say, okay, what are these guys talking about? Let me just stop and listen for a minute. If that's what got you here, then thank God for it and stop and think. Think about why we are here. Why are you here? What is it that God wants from you in your life? You have a mission here. It's not just to accumulate, to eat and drink, to procreate and just die. No, you have a soul. So a soul which goes beyond the material that we see externally. We have a soul, a soul which was created by God to be a true slave of God, to be in tune with the natural way that God has created this world. But we've been given a choice. We've been given the, the right and the opportunity to be a part of that natural way or to oppose it to do our own thing. This is the choice that God has given us. So, my advice is, make the right choice. Do the right thing here. Stop and think. Find out the most important question in your life. Find out why you're here. Very well put. Thank you very much. Please tell the people where they can get uh, some more of uh, you actually have an online university 
mm -hmm. where they can visit and attain some of your books? Yeah, I mean, of course, they can just go basically to BilalPhillips.com. BilalPhillips.com? That's from there. You can go through whatever channels you wish. Everything is there. Yeah. All your books? Yeah. Books are there, information, uh, university courses, free courses that they can go in and, you know, increase their knowledge. And, uh, you know, if you need contacts with organizations, they're there also knowing what are the good websites to go and you know, get more information, more correct information, because of course there's a lot of junk out there on yeah. the internet. But to get to the right information, we have a whole sort of rating for the good Islamic websites. You can go there, find the top ones, see what's good about them, and go in and get additional information. And it's about really getting sufficient information to make the right choice. Jazakallah, had to thank you very much uh, for being with us. Inshallah, we look forward to having you again. I mean, and I'd like to thank everybody for sitting tight, sitting through another episode of The Dean Show. You've learned Islam simply means surrender and submission to the creator of the heavens and the earth and not his cre creation. It's a complete way of life for everybody. Islam is not about terrorism or terrorizing people. And again, thank you for coming to the source to learn more about Islam. Come here every week at thedeanshow.com. If you missed us at the TV station in Chicago... You can view all of our shows at thedeanshow.com, T-H-E-D-E-E-N show. Until next time, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali. سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم